Hey, welcome back. Today we are going to talk about KZ's new build style set called Lin Long or Ling Long. And I think that translates to micro exquisite. And uh, so I would, I would agree with that. It is a very small looking build style set, all metal build. I think this is actually a uh, CNC insert that's actually holding the six millimeter dynamic driver, which is a variation on their XUN driver. Cable is non-removable and one that you've seen before on lots of uh, KZ sets. It's pretty much their stock cable. So very nice build, a little more generic looking than I was expecting for KZ. I would have expected some logos, something else, but I, I got no complaints. I think it's just a solid, very nice. And uh, also that open back is uh, sort of covered up with a metal grill. So you can't really see in there, but it is an open back. You also do get this plastic case, which is very nice, which KZ has sold on their own for a couple dollars. So, you know, all in all, actually a, quite a nice uh, little package for $15. And the box itself is this new style packaging, which is pretty minimal and just enough to cover up the, uh, or to surround the plastic case that they included. So jumping into it, I will say that this one is probably the first surprise of 2023. I was you know, I didn't have huge expectations. It's actually a kind of affordable set. KZ didn't really do any over-the-top marketing, but I think they did. They delivered a solid, well-tuned, affordable microdynamic driver that can take on more expensive sets. You know, I think typically they say that in their marketing and perhaps underperform. And I think this one, I think they overperformed the marketing because they didn't market it all that much. But uh, for me, I think it's a sound signature that just works for me and my playlist and, uh, so I thought it was surprisingly good, especially for the price. And, and a lot of this is going to come down to number two. I think this is a bullet style set that actually changed the tuning that we've heard for about the past year. And if we go, remember what we did, what happened last year, you see this great arc. And this great arc is lots of sets that all had the same base shelf. Blonde Fat Girl, Tanya, Dumpling, Vesna, Little Q, you know, that the amount that they compensated in pin and may be all different, but as far as a mid base heavy base shelf, pretty much all there. And you can kind of see pushing Lin Long really kind of flattens it out, uh, scoops out the mid base. So it's actually a much cleaner mids and then pushed a lot of energy into the sub base and actually gave you a reduced pin again, because you don't need to compensate nearly as much. This is probably like three DB at 200. And this is actually a very, I think it poked up just barely above 10 dB and then, you know, really slants down in a nice way, especially for you guys who don't like the four or five kilohertz bumps. You like to have your treble kind of relax and just extend out naturally. That's exactly what they did here. So, you know, props to them. I think they tried a new tuning that no one else has really uh, tried recently. And uh, I think it's successful. I think it's a tuning that I like as well. What it does resemble Probably the IE600, you know, kind of same, very similar base shelf. Um, Sennheiser actually even has a more reduced pin again, probably because they don't have as much base here. But I think the general shape works. I think, you know, level-wise, I think that all works. And I'm sure it sounds entirely different than an IE600. That's kind of a different world. But, you know, as far as inspiration for tuning and uh, pulling off a micro-dynamic driver with uh, this style base shelf... You know, not a, not a bad uh, role model there. So, yep, reduce mid base, easy to drive. I think most notable for me when I put it on, um, even not the base, but there's just a lot of space in the staging and the imaging, better than lots of forty dollars sets. Um, where the open back didn't work on CSX for me, I think it actually does work here. I don't know why that is. I think KZ has tried the open back two or three times already, and it actually seems to work out better on this set. You know surprisingly being i think the cheapest of them all but yeah i don't know it actually worked out for me so the tuning like i just said not really traditional kz tuning not like a big v shape not a really bass heavy uh, big v shape i mean mostly because it's a six millimeter dynamic driver and i'm not really sure i would have guessed it was kz at all because there's actually a very even response when you look at what they really did through the trouble this kind of relaxed arc through the treble isn't really typical of kz they tend to pop up a little bit but then end up popping up even more somewhere over here and you end up with a weird peaky bright spot and not not so much on this one it's just very even and uh, lack of bright spots so sound i think i would call it a bassy engaging fun 
I do think the mids are the star of the show here. I think they are better mids than lots of other KZ sets recently. And it has a relaxed treble, which is also a little different than uh, traditional KZ sets recently. More fun than technical, but if you listen closely, there's actually, you might surprise you just because what they did here. So enough energy right here in pin again, and then drop it down so this doesn't really mask out how they extend it out here. There's some really fine detail that actually happens out there. It's actually it's actually done quite well. Um, a little finesse there that you know maybe they didn't plan on. Maybe it was a happy accident. But uh, I think if you listen closely, there's actually some pretty good surprises there. Not a big VEDM set. If you are a traditional KZ user looking for a big V, this one is not for you. So the bass, like I said, that um, sub bass heavy looking big ramp. It looks a little crazy. But it works with a six millimeter dynamic driver because it's not as impactful. It's not pushing as much air. I think they did pick that level because it sort of approximates what they did on some other sets, but executed on a six millimeter. So it looks a little bigger, but again, remember it's just a smaller driver. It's, it's going to be a little less impactful. Look closely at that reduced mid base level. Very unusual for KZ. I tend to complain lots and lots about their mid base levels are a bit too high. This one, I think they nailed it. And again, I think. Pushing more energy out to the sub bass works here, works on other sets. It's a very popular thing to do. It's also why I like that bass shelf. Provides plenty of bass, but doesn't really dominate the sound. So it allows the mids to shine without treble boost, faster response from some of the other 10 millimeters that they've put out. I think I would agree with that. Smaller drivers um, should be able to move a little faster than a 10 millimeter. I think in theory, I think this one actually does it pretty well. Not boomy as you're expecting from the graph. Like I said, it's a big, big ramp, but it doesn't really sound as boomy because of the size. And you can even pull off some harder tracks like Go Go Penguin, Signal in the Noise, or Get Lucky. And you end up with, you think of a six millimeter not being all that impactful, but yeah, I think this one, it's it actually gives you some really nice defined thump to it. That non-distracting but defined thump. And there's actually depth to it. So lots of sub bass, like I said, they pushed it out. So not only are you getting that impact, but it actually has some follow through in depth. It's actually done quite well, I think. Again, I think if you look at my target, I think it actually matches their base curve uh, pretty closely. So not, not all that surprising that I liked it. So the mids, uh, what I noticed kind of right away, it's the balance. It's just more natural for me. KZ tends to make things a little bit more brighter. This one, I would say, is just more in balance. And it's that relaxed treble. You know, relax out. Don't have too many peaks out there. And it adds balance all the way from, you know, that upper bit all the way through the lower part in the, in the mids. I think it is the star here. Not every KZ set gets that balance right. And especially on male vocals, like Joe Nichols, uh, Sonny and 75, you need that chesty, breathy, you know, it's got to sound like male vocals are, are kind of emanating from their chest. There has to be a depth to it, a body to it, you know, and I think it's actually done pretty well here considering the driver and the price. Adele loves love song. Another one, you know, her voice has to drop low enough and be able to have this dynamic range where it actually sounds more natural. And I think it's actually done well here. I think everything is everything is nice. It goes deep enough, clean, doesn't lose focus on the vocals. There's not too much bass to really distract you. Not enough treble to distract you. Everything is kind of done right and in balance. Again, it's that six millimeter at play. Bass and treble don't overstep or overshadow the mids. Mids are more open, exposed, and what's there sounds perfectly fine. Won't win resolution ribbon, I think, on busier tracks. I think you start to notice it. So the driver is, is actually pretty good, especially on less busy tracks. On busier tracks, I think you start to notice where, you know, probably on a second revision of the driver technology, I think they'll actually get that. But, you know, it's $15, so do consider the price. Treble and... I think this was always going to be a nitpick. Even if you, if someone just said, I have a six millimeter driver and it was $15, I would probably say the nitpick is going to be in the treble somewhere. And I think it's just, you know, maintaining enough resolution and level. And like I said, they actually rolled this one, not really rolled off, but it just kind of extends very naturally to my ears. But for KZ sets where they tend to bump up the treble a little more, this one is a little more relaxed and, I don't, I don't know. I, I sort of went back and forth on it. I think it's really what separates regular dynamic drivers from special dynamic drivers, being able to extend and having enough detail and resolution out in the upper treble. And this one, 
you know, I would nitpick and say it falls a little bit short on level. But again, I would just I would say it's just better to be a bit shy than fatiguing. So I'm not really going to complain too much about it. So that track, um, that Ladivo Le track, so two minutes and 30 seconds, that's where it really gets more complex. And it's really hard to hear separation, especially all the way from the treble, all the way in through the mids. It all kind of munges together and smears together. And that, so, again, not going to win the resolution ribbon, and but I think generally they actually did a pretty good job. And I could certainly find tracks like that, which nitpick it. Uh, but then I could pick tracks like London Grammar's, you know, Hey Now or Now Woman, now, or Oh Woman and Oh Man. You know, just those beginning open those opening lines where you hear some of that reverb and and some of those little audio cues that are really hard to do on sharper, more technical sets. I think the decay and the sustain is actually done quite well here for such a cheap set and such a small driver. So you do get that feeling that you know they are recording in a room with acoustic properties, and so pretty cool. Like I said, if you listen really, really closely, there's some there's some surprises there. So it doesn't fall um, flat like some other recent sets. I think the extension is actually done pretty good here. Stage, I wouldn't call it 3D as much as it's just a very nice space for um, the price. Um, more like a big space with seamless imaging rather than um, locked in positions. So that track, Richter Spring 1, I think you start off with one player right in the middle and then you start to hear them come in and they get wider and wider and... It's something that you notice more on more expensive sets that um, just when you think that a set is, you know, a player or an instrument is wide, then someone pops in that's even wider. And it's, it's a very cool effect. And it happened on this set as well. Like I said, there's just a couple of things here that, that reminded me of more expensive sets. So uh, I do think it cheap set that actually can um, compete with some more expensive sets. And it's just some of these really small finesse details that that i hear because i'm used to hearing some more expensive sets that are kind of recognize them in in such a cheap set it's pretty cool so again i think kz did pretty good on this one so thank you guys again for tuning in and i will see you next time